Hello and welcome to another episode for the summer special of the ANF podcast. For this episode, we're moving on to fostering now. So, fostering in Ireland, we spoke to um, Dara and Deirdre from uh, Five Rivers Foster Care here in Ireland, an independent fostering agency. Um, again, another really interesting episode um, and conversation. Lots of similarities and quite a few differences as well. Um, it really struck me how some of the the kind of procedures and processes in Ireland are, are quite different to the UK um, and how new independent foster agencies are to Ireland. So again, hope you enjoy it. Um, and as ever, if you want to contact us, drop us a DM or an email to the anfpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to review us and give us some really good feedback, then we would always appreciate that on whatever platform that you're listening to. Um, just rate us and um, yeah, every little helps. Enjoy. So today we are joined by um, a little bit of a different voice for the ANF podcast. Um, we're joined by Deirdre and Dara, who join us from Five Rivers Foster Care in Ireland. Good Hello. evening, Deirdre and Dara. Good evening. Hi, how's it going? Good. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. For so long, we've wanted to do something that focuses in on and it kind of stuff in Ireland. So it's really great that you've agreed to come in. And um, of course, Al and I did some stuff for Five Rivers in the UK quite a while did ago we? now. But um, we seem to have. Yes, we did. Oh, my days. Yes, no, we, we did. We did a thing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Yes. But you did the fans of fostering, didn't yes, you? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so it's, it's great that we've kind of made the link because I don't think when I first reached out to you that I realized that you were part of Five Rivers in the UK. But I, well, I say part of. You can explain that when you when you introduce yourself. But okay. um, let's let's do intros first. So, um, Deirdre, let's start with you. Give um, give us a little yes, bit of an I'm, introduction to yourself. Cool. So I'm Deirdre McDonough and I'm the CEO or Managing Director of Five Rivers Ireland. And I've been working with Five Rivers for nearly, I'll be 21 years with Five That's Rivers hard. in July. Um, and so before that, I worked as a social worker in what was then the health board, but would now be two slept. Mm -hmm. So as a child protection social worker. So I've been working, I suppose, with children in care all my professional adult life. Yeah. So wow. And it's an absolute joy, even though some not always, <laughs> not everything is joyful, but it is. Yeah, it is a joy yeah. because families are one. Yeah, you know. So we understand that. So, Dara, what about yourself? Yeah, uh, I am working in Five Rivers. I'm a principal counselor, psychologist, and psychotherapist on our multidisciplinary team. And I'm working, I suppose, nine, ten years, I'd say, in Five Rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, and pr prior to that, I was in uh, the Children's Hospital in Temple Street, working in St. Clair's Unit, which is the Child Sexual Abuse Assessment and Therapy Service in there. And I was working with the HSC, the, the Health Service Executive here in Ireland, mm. working with uh, adults uh, in the National Council Services with adults who were abused as children. Right. Uh, I had a bit of a securities route. I kind of did psychology many years ago, and then I was also working in in uh, the Gardaí for a while, and uh, that's the Irish Police Service. And then also, he's good. Uh, he's was good, in... isn't he? Darren's good. He knows who he's talking to tonight. Just, just making his translations, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then also, in then after that, then when I left that, uh, I think I'd done too much kind of social worky type stuff. Yeah. I decided I needed to leave, and uh, I then worked in residential care for about five years before before kind of pursuing counselling psychology. Mm. Yeah, blimey, okay. that's a, cool. that's a CV and a half. That is Dara. Yeah, yeah, and I've left a little bit out there already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be here till yeah, yeah. well late. Um, yeah. So, and just just to clarify, because obviously when we do the show notes, people have, will have read the show notes and they'll see Deirdre and Dare. So we are pronouncing Deirdre, which is the Irish yeah. pro Irish pronunciation of yes, it is, that yeah. name, and then Dara, which is Perfect. spelled. Yeah. Differently to how yeah, it would be maybe in other countries, should we say? There's about yeah. three different ways yeah. to spell Ireland, even in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, and, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. and more. Absolutely, just so. confuse things. Yeah, I was hoping that Al would do the introductions and he would say, "Here's Deirdre and Dare," and I would just sit back and laugh. But he he asked <laughs> he asked me before you came in how to pronounce your names. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, so <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning then, from from my perspective, because uh, Al and I have both been foster carers as as well as being adopted parents. Um, in the UK system and obviously our worst in Foster. But Deirdre, can you kind of 
take us to the beginning of of the fostering yeah. process and maybe tell us about the assessment and how that works. Can I ask, a, qu- can I ask a question yeah, so- before that? No, because I was intrigued because I just thought we with the terms like social worker, and I thought, well, it, it depending on where you are, that can the route to social work and what that is can be quite different. So, can you give me an explanation, a little bit of how you become a social worker and what that looks like? I mean, in the UK, in England, for example, we're registered and all that kind of sort of stuff. Yes. Yeah, so I can do that. I'm a registered social worker still. So um, so in in Ireland, there's about two or three routes to social work, um, all involved doing a primary degree. in. So most people do it in social work or in um, you can do it in social science and then do a master's in social work. I, I studied in Trinity College, which was a four year degree, including in social work, so it included placements. Um, but some people do social care or social care or or social science, and then we'll do a two year master's to in social work to get down that route. So similar to the UK, social workers have to be registered and our registered body is CORU, um, which is C-O-R-U. Um, and social workers must be registered for, with that. So it'd be very similar. I can't remember the name um, of the UK <coughs> body. Oh, they change it like. Like it's going out of fashion, so don't worry about that. It'll have changed by the time we release this. So no. It's not worth it. <laughs> well, look, you know, and then our inspector, I suppose, in terms of inspection, you have Ofsted and we have Hikwa are, are the visitors that we get, you know. So that's the, um, yeah, you know, is is interesting. Um, so, but it's 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 similar in some ways, but in the UK, from like I sit on the at the board in Five Rivers Childcare in the UK as well as here. So, you know, I do a bit kind of get a bit of what's going on there. And, you know, when you're inspected over here or oh, well, over here, they don't have good or um, outstanding as standard. They're, really, they're compliant, substantially compliant or varying degrees of non-compliant, you know, <laughs> but they, there was at one point where they did have exceed the standards, but they've taken that out now. So it doesn't mean the people yeah. don't exceed the standard, but they're not gonna they're not gonna give you you don't get the laudish for it that you might I, like. I think you thank deserve you. Some. I, I promise to not interrupt anymore. No, no, that was actually a really valid question because I didn't even think about that. I just assumed you, you got a yeah. you know, you did your trade and became a social worker. So well done, thank Al. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And thank you for that, Deirdre. Um yeah. so yeah, um, back to fostering then. So um yeah, can can we kind of think about well discuss the, yeah. the kind of starting point and assessments and what have you yeah so i suppose now like i mean foster and assessment would be like i suppose way going way back foster and assessment probably like i mean if you're talking 20 years ago when i started foster and assessments here would have been very similar to the baf assessment that goes on in the uk home study mm. couple of references you know and the training um and it it has evolved from that but in some ways it's similar, but there is competencies, but not in the, like in the UK, they, they would have had a competency based assessment yeah. where there's you know, boom, boom, boom here. There is company, but it's more, there's a lot of analysis required in relation to the, the, you know, what, so you you learn, you have to talk about people about where they've come from, what their life has been like. Um, in terms of, there's a lot of safeguarding stuff, you know, so obviously you have to guard a vet people, and um, do background checks if they're known to the and and that would include international mm. police checks where if people have lived for abroad for a long time and a lot of Irish people have yeah. because we're we're an emigrating or an emigrant country and then we have a lot of people who come to Ireland which is very different to what it was even when I started really mm. you know when we started there was very few so but we're lucky enough we've we've foster families from all over the world really you know and which is just wonderful. Mm. Um, and similarly, we'd have a lot of kids placed with us who are from, you know, they're, they're either their country of origin or their parents' country of origin might will be different, you know. But we have a lot of kids who are, or you know, are Irish descent too, obviously. So, um, so in that sense, the the difference. I mean, one of the differences we're an independent agency, which means that um, we work, we we carry out assessments and recruit foster families. But in in Ireland, one of the differences that independent agencies, when when a family's 
uh, being assessed, which is really about it's it's not a test. It's about social worker getting to know the family and the family getting to know them, getting to understand what fostering is about, what the challenges might be, and to really start to think about how would this family fit um, for a child. And it's about me how the child could, the family could meet a child's needs. So mm-hmm. even though there's lots of families who desperately want to have a child join them. Our job is while we we really do want to find a family that will work well in that family, but actually the first premise has to be to find the family that's the right fit for the child. Yeah. But having said that, the way I always think is there's not every family can care for every child, mm-hmm. but there's all there's an awful lot of families that can care for some child. Yeah. You know, and if you get the right fit and the matching, you know, there's lots of guidance around matching around age and all of that sort of stuff but so there are some bits of matching that is to do with really getting a sense of this child who they are not i mean their background is one thing but actually what what makes them tick what do they enjoy you know it's lovely to have if you know if you can find a a child that would the families that would get each other do you know what i mean so a bit of a sense or they and you know it's 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 like the ultimate matching, you know, that you, if it clicks, it clicks. Mm. And all the other things that are important, you know, the guidance is important. But sometimes you get a feel for a child and you go, right, yeah. I know exactly where they should go. You know, because you just know the family, you know, they share interests or there's, you know, somebody that might be really, really an intelligent kid that, you know, that might be a bit quirky that, you know, into space, into something else. Mm. And you try and do the best we can to match that way and um, so i suppose the assessment one of the differences for us is that we have to present our families at the end you've the social worker has to complete a report which you basically do with the family even though you're the person writing it it's based on everything the family has told you there's no surprises mm. you know um and, and it's presented to the what's called the foster care committee so that would be a panel for your uk listeners they it would be the panel but our panel we have to present to the two slip panel rather than having our own panel. Right. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. you no. Know, so in like independent fostering is probably a bit behind. Like the like fostering Fiverr is in the UK is thirty years old. We're twenty one. Mm-hmm. So this year, but we would have been the first fostering independent fostering agency to operate, and you know, really, we totally broke the mold at that point because it was just not a done thing. You know. Um, <laughs> I you know, know that. I hate, Believe me, I know like, that. I <laughs> so, you know, there was lots of things that were, you know, and, and it was very different that like, and I suppose there was suspicion Ireland, you know, 20 years ago, there was a lot of, old, you know, things coming mm. out that were very wrong with yeah. the care system mm-hmm. in the past, you know, yeah. um, you know, and, and I, it's very, very difficult to be part of that. So I suppose there's a lot of suspicion you know these you know our fostering agencies coming in to make a load of money off kids that's what people can mm-hmm. think I mean I come from a family civil servant so I know for me that definitely wasn't what made me jump and go this route I mean really what I liked you know it was by chance I saw an ad and for foster families and I rang up to see that they want anybody to assess them Right. Lo and behold, they said, "Yeah, you can assess them, but you can set the whole thing up while you're at it." <laughs> so, yeah, I did. <laughs> help, you know. It works, yeah. 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 So, like our job, then once the families are approved, I suppose we look at matching, trying to really do the best we can to place mm. fam- children with families that we think can do well and can do well with support. And then our job is to provide really the best support we can. Mm-hmm. You know, and I suppose as we got, you know, the longer we were working, I suppose I, I knew knew of Dara professionally anyway and would have known him, you know, beforehand. So I suppose when it, the time came and we were in a conversation and Dara was saying, you know, and wondering would there be any psychology opportunities. We didn't officially have a vacancy for a psychologist, but we we made one, <laughs> which was, great. you know, and we had uh, social care workers, which is social care is 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 quite a it, it, it's it's a different profession in that they focus on working directly with kids and and um you know so it's a slightly different qualification a lot of social care workers work, work in residential also you know really experienced and qualified to a high level so we already had social care mm. so i suppose it was 
it was really, really great mm. to get Dara on board to start providing a different type of support. And some of that was for the kids who were placed, mm-hmm. some of it for the foster families and some of it for foster parents, but also for kids, young people who foster because, you know, like really when you open up your family to to care for a child and very often the kids kids who come into care will have had some level of trauma because mm-hmm. it wouldn't it wouldn't be coming into care if there's something hadn't happened yeah but you know it can be hard and no matter you know it's you know it it it's as was about trying to support mm-hmm. all of that so we mm-hmm. started off our multidisciplinary started off with dara yeah um and so just in terms of the, the um oh al's got a question wait a minute i've got to let him speak so if i don't let him speak he'll just he'll, he'll end up having to take <laughs> yeah, his no. hand or bite his, or bite his. see he wasn't he said i don't know even know why i'm here tonight and now he's just button in so i, I talk a lot by the way yeah, no worry. it's all right Put up the hand if you want me to. <laughs> right so you said you you've blown my mind right so i've got some questions <laughs> firstly um ireland's got about a population of about five million give or take yeah. 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 Five. Yeah. five so how many yeah, children so. are actually in the? I mean, would you call it the care system? Is that what? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You would. So there's about round about six thousand children in care altogether. So and about I think about five. I, I should have got me stats for you before <laughs> this, but I think there's about five thousand. Probably are in foster care. Of the children in foster care, and one thing that's probably a bit different as well is a third of them will be placed with foster parents who are directly related to them. So it'd be a bit like kinship care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in an early kinship care is quite, well, it, it, you know, they would, fa- those families are required to go to yeah. the, the, you know, the same, almost the same level of assessment, which yeah. is a good way. Now, it can, it can be hard because yeah. sometimes the kids, Young child can go there, might go there first because you know that the, in the, sometimes kids come into care when you know something has happened yeah. that they need to move. Mm. So very that, quick. So, that was my first question. Know, I can I can and, tell. I'm if you're happy for me to butt in, I'm happy to butt in because I I'm conscious as well that Dara's not had a chance to chip in as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that was one of my questions, but I was curious, you sort of hinted at a little bit about the history of Ireland and how they've looked after children. And just, um, Mm. you you sort of touched upon, you didn't say it, but maybe institutionalized care being more prevalent. Was that something? So how did the foster care system sort of evolve out of that? And what was that a conscious decision or was it just a natural progression? I mean, I think like, you know, when we're talking about that, you're talking about back in, you know, I suppose certainly in the, let's say when my parents were growing up, you're talking about kind of the the industrial homes, Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of, you know, mother and baby homes, all different to the sort of care system now. So like, like when I started as a social worker in 1996, I think I qualified and at that stage, you know, there was still much more children in Ireland who were in care would be cared for through foster care than residential. But there were, you know, I mean, if you're talking about sort of big industrial homes, big orphanages nearly, you know, albeit not everybody in there would be necessarily an orphan, yeah. you know. Uh, but that's, you're going to kind of going way back. But there, there would have been, you know, a lot of publicity about the yeah. religious orders and around how kids were cared for in, you know, um, you know, and that's, I suppose, a very, very difficult part of Ireland's past, you know, in, in relation to, but, you know, I, I suppose, and, and foster, when I started foster care was very much, there was a lot of kids in foster care, but it was very altruistic. Like the, you know, it was tiny allowed, like they, at the time foster families would have had to, you know, you'd, save up all your receipts if you bought a t-shirt if you bought you know it was just different it wasn't you know it's still not professionalized I think in the way that it is in the UK yeah. um and, and and in some ways I think some of that the beauty of it in some ways is that while foster carers do get an allowance which is there to support and rightly there to support children and the need meeting the needs of children there is you know there really is a sense of having people who really just care about kids and and not every you know like 
uh, there's a lot of really good foster carers who don't have a background in psychology, social work, anything like that. They might have a background in driving buses or fixing cars or doing something and totally different, mm-hmm. do you know. And that's okay because you know, like the best dads and mams yeah. aren't always the people who read all the books, you know, because yeah. the kids don't read them. You know, they don't read the parenting books anyway. You know, yeah. they do their own thing. You know, <laughs> well, I feel seen. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mean, it's so interesting, Deirdre. Just even the the process itself. And Dara, I'll come to you in a sec. But the, the one thing I just wanted to find out from you, Deirdre, before I, I pop over to Dara, there is who is who who holds the kind of what we would have called parental responsibility for the for the child who how does that work in terms of you know supervision of foster carers or foster parents um who you know, how do, so what is the kind of legal setup of that okay. yeah so so in terms of the parental responsibility lies with TUSLA so the ch- TUSLA is the equivalent of the local authority and mm. uh, recently formed well 2014 so not that recently and what TUSLA means in Irish is Two means start and law is a day. So it's almost like a new day or kind of mm. um fresh start. And and was to th- so that that's what that means. So the the child and care social worker would still for even for children placed with five rivers, mm. they would hold the responsibility for children in care, making sure they have contact with their families, applying for care orders, all of that. And at times, you know, dealing with issues like consent, um you know, for passports or, yeah. you know, going on trips and everything like mm-hmm. that. And then in relation to the foster, so what Five Rivers holds is the responsibility, all foster, foster families should have an allocated social worker. And, and certainly in Five Rivers, they absolutely do. Mm-hmm. And that person is there to do two things. One is to make sure that families are assessed and vetted and that they're vetted on an ongoing basis and that they to provide a level of supervision or oversight to make sure the families are doing what we expect them to do, mm. you know, yeah. and to make sure so the idea is, and also then to sort of represent the, the 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 views of the family about how things are going when the child in care, when there's reviews or, or, you know, when you're talking about the placement, because everybody has conflicting needs and it's about balancing all mm. of those, you know, so yeah. Um, we would retain that bit and we would do the support for foster carers training. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, technically, like it's Tusler's responsibility to sort of source and access therapeutic support for children in care mm-hmm. and all of that. But we would certainly provide with Tusler's consent level. So I suppose, I suppose as we've grown, we've realized that actually it's really good if we have some things that we can offer ourselves because then maybe we we can reduce the length of time somebody might need to have a yeah. waiting list. Yeah, and, and a lot of our families would say, you know, actually, if you can get something when you need it, the thing that you need won't necessarily be as big as what it winds up being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if you can try and solve things when they're a little bit smaller, mm-hmm. you know, then we can, things go along, you know, yeah, go along, you know, you can try and get a handle on it before. Yeah. It's too late, yeah, you absolutely. know. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, I've got so many more questions, but we'll, we'll we might come back to them if we get some time in the end. Yeah. I, I think for in terms of the process and the assessment, that, that kind of really makes sense. There's a lot of kind of similarities, but then there's some slight differences yeah. as well. But actually, at the end of the day, the responsibility is that children are being looked after if they're in the care system, and the carers are being supported, trained, and looked after if they are foster parents. So you know that's. In an ideal world, that's all you'd want, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure it doesn't always work out the way we hope it will, but you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly relaxed about it now, so I can kind of tick, yeah. tick off a load of questions that I've asked there. So, um, <clears throat> and and Dara, I mean, you know, principal counselling psychologist and psychotherapist—that's quite a long thing to have on your e- on, on, it, on, on your on your email signature. I mean, where does that fit in in fostering? <clears throat> yeah. Well, well, I, I, where, where where I started in terms of fostering was uh, that that piece that piece there just said earlier just got made that contact and uh, looking towards I, I I do a lot of filial therapy you know parent child play therapy um, and uh, I'm an instructor in that here here in Ireland and uh, that was the whole idea I just thought okay at the beginning this would be really useful in terms of helping foster carers and the kids that are in their care. Mm. Um, 
And then it's kind of expanded from there. So working very closely with the social care team in Five Rivers, who also had, had a play therapist there as well. We, you know, began, continue to do kind of work uh, using both filial therapy and then also working with young people and, and children in care as well. And then gradually what 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 emerged really was that that the, that foster carers really needed that kind of therapeutic yeah. support. And more and more work became that piece of really helping foster carers, you know. So it was a, it was a bit, it took a, it took a couple of years, but that, that's what yeah. it morphed into in terms of being able to offer that support. Mm. And obviously, you know, there's 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 so much need, and and the, the children, you know, you know, really um, benefit so much from when foster carers are kind of in, in tune with them and really understand them, yeah. and kind of really get where they've come from, and then how to respond in in, in that particularly kind of slightly different way than than you might normally in traditional mm-hmm. parenting as well. Mm-hmm. So that that moved on then, and that that morphed into us kind of bringing kind of DDP, dialectic developmental psychotherapy, and practice into the organisation, which we're in the process of trying to uh, building five rivers into a, a certified ddp organization and um, and that's come as part of our, our work as the multidisciplinary team so it started with with fiona, fiona murphy who was our social care manager with her social care team myself and now we have kind of we have a couple of other psychologists angela and, and audrey audrey's our audrey sheridan's our, our, our clinical manager and then also uh we've ot speech and language um and and play therapy uh, as well within that so we're really trying to kind of build the the both the multidisciplinary assessments so we can do really holistic assessments that are really understanding of the the context of of children in foster care and also residential yeah. care um and i've been able to really tailor and, and and really find out okay so develop a really holistic understanding of the kids and young people and then really kind of put a roadmap together of what's going to really help this child that's, and family. Yeah. Um, so that's the... Kind of, that's no, I was going to say yeah, Sorry, Juan, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that feels quite different to my experience of the English system in that you see... Are you given quite a lot mm-hmm. of autonomy to work... <clears throat> excuse me, work kind of directly with the children um, and... Is, or is that, or do children have an allocated, because in the UK, children have an allocated social worker that's usually sort of offset outside of the fostering service or the fostering provider or whoever the foster carer is that who has their own. So that I suppose it's two questions really. One is in terms of sort of how much autonomy are you given to sort of in, intervene and sort of choose and plan and assess what goes on. But the second part really is um, foster carers don't necessarily sign up to be that level of therapeutic, they're kind of thinking, oh, I'm just going to be a, I'm just going to be a dad, or I'm just going to be a mum, and it's all going to be, you know, uh, you know Absolutely. I'll do some baking yeah. and it'll all be okay. But that, so that, how do you kind of yeah. get your carers on board with that? Of course. So, yeah. So, 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 so the first part, we, we would negotiate and, and kind of work very closely with Tusla around if So they'd make a referral for some kind of an assessment and then we'd have professionals meeting to kind of look at that and say, okay, we're also, because there's other, other things here that I think might be really important to look at and examine in relation to this trial to develop that kind of understanding and then create that roadmap based embedded in a really solid foundation around all of their needs in terms of the psychology, OT, speech and language and, and all of that. Thinking about it very holistically, um. So, so there, there, there's a degree of autonomy, um. Once the consent is, is given by Tusta, and obviously then financially as well, Tusta would have to kind of pay towards that in 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 terms of, of that kind of assessment work, I, I, um. And, and and that can work really really well when it works well, and then other times maybe not so well. So 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 there's that that negotiating yeah. piece that always happens. <clears throat> Um, yeah. But I think the families like because Dara has been with us ten years, mm. you know. So over time, some of the the work that Dara does and the team do is work with the family. So mm. you know, and 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 it might be about it's 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 as what the main thing is is to try and work with families that that we're not working with you because we think there's something wrong with yeah, you. Yeah. We're working because <clears throat> this is difficult, you know. Absolutely. And 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 it's really and sometimes the child that that you're working with, well. In a way, there's not something wrong with the child. The child is rea- very often reacting perfectly well to the, 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 the I don't know if I could say the word, but the, the shit storm that's been thrown their yeah, way fine. or the, yeah, the fine. Yeah. you know, like sometimes like if I don't know how, you know, their reactions are not necessarily mm. wrong. Mm. They're, you know, they might not be pretty and they might not be, but actually they're, they're responding mm probably okay to what's yeah. been thrown at them so yeah 
Um, you know, and, and Dara, one of the things that like this was when you did when we talked about doing DDP, one of it came from Dara's research that do you remember you were doing yeah. the psychotherapy um, research? You know, and, and and the kids, the big your the name of it is talk to me like I'm a human, you know, and and it really when you presented it to the team and to families, it was really profound in relation to how I felt and how the kids experienced and how you know good and bad you know but mm. but a, a, a ddp like i wouldn't be uh you know i wouldn't be massively therapeutically you know i, I you know I, i'm not, not a psychotherapist not anything you know yeah. and i kind of quite practical in lots of ways you know mm. but and you kind of need to be sometimes parts of social work you need to have the practical head as well yeah. because you know there's the, the, the flow there's the fluffy stuff but actually what's lovely about ddp is it's really you don't have to have seven degrees to be able to understand what it is like mm. pace is really yeah sim- it, you know it's a simple competence yeah. in lots of ways yeah because that because because that question you're asking all about you know yeah people come in and they kind of go i just want to be a dad like you were saying you know um, and as we're kind of running out, we're kind of been rolling out foster care groups over the last year, which is an integration of lots of DDP, uh, some of the filial pieces, some kind of multiple focused family therapy. So we kind of integrated into it's kind of a 10 session module with a group of foster cares. And, and lots of, like lots of the feedback are saying is, OK, this is this is hitting the right. nail on the head. This is exactly what we need. We, we want this. And what they're learning is, you know, obviously we have our. Our, our kind of curriculum, whatever we're presenting it, but we we tweak it each time for 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 each group depending on what's going on for them. But what they're learning so much is from each other, and actually, do you know what? Realizing, you know, I'm not <laughs> mad, and that is this is very challenging. My role is very very challenging, but it's lovely to hear from everyone else, and so validating, and they kind of really get it. And but then also kind of go, you know, we we actually do we we be, we've been struggling knowing how to how to re- understand and really respond to these kids at times mm-hmm. and this is hitting the nail in the head for us yeah so um yeah so so, so that that that's been really really wonderful and yeah. we kind of trained up all of the social works in five rivers and that kind of model as well again with the integration some of the tweaks for 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 for, for the context and, and and for the irish context in particular yeah. and making it very fostering focused as well yeah. but um, it's it's been i think it's just developing capacity and uh confidence i suppose you know as well because so sometimes you just don't know how to respond here it's so bloody hard i don't know how to be i don't know why this has happened i don't know why this young person yeah. in front of me is behaving the way they are and then when we have that understanding that everyone kind of really gets it and just benefits from it yeah. in terms of that connection and that did come from um yeah. th- that research did it, uh, I went back and did a psychotherapy doctor. That's why it's a big long name, counselor psychologist <laughs> and psychotherapist. Because I want to bloody use this now. <laughs> so that's that's why it's psychotherapist as well. Um, but but it was 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 talking to young people while they're in foster care about their experiences of therapy, and really what was come what, what the nub of it was. We want to be uh, seen, understood. Uh, we want therapists to help us kind of build connections uh, with 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 our foster carers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we want to have opportunities to discuss how I am and how they are. I want to know how they are as well, and I want to build those connections as well. Um, and, and there are some of the really strong kind of findings for, for, from from hearing their voices, yeah. and also really understanding just how bloody hard it is for them to go into a therapist's office, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how hard it is for them to kind of risk relationship w- with other people so therapists but also their foster carers or anybody else because they're so uh so scared because they've been so badly treated yeah. uh, but, so yeah. that led on then to us kind of we we need we need to do something different and and yeah the foster carers really got on board with it i have to say you know yeah. oh, they, um, they're really into it like you know and, and what's lovely about it as well is it doesn't there's no obligation on anybody to do anything perfectly you no. know it's actually no. And I like Fiona that works really closely during the training with Dara. One of the bits that her little tweak to the DDP is what we call the two cup approach. So when you go out to meet your, as a social worker, you go out to meet your foster family and find out how things are going. First cup of tea is to hear what's going on. You don't try and fix it. First cup of tea is to just mm. take it all in and really listen and understand and go, you know, to say that is just awful and to have your rant. And the second cup is where you think about it together and try and come up with a plan or think about what are we going to do now. Mm. But um, and it's just a really simple way of 
you know, right, I can mm. do that. Let's. This is our first cup and a second cup and a cup of tea. All, all in. Everything's you know? allowed here. And, yeah, and a cup of tea, like in, even like, and it's a very natural thing in Ireland. Like, you know, the cup of tea solves everything. <laughs> if somebody dies, you get it. <laughs> you might get something in your cup of tea. For, <laughs> you know, but we don't do that. When we're going out. No, of course, family. I mean, you know, you know, but it's it's a very simple thing. You don't mind if the cup has you know herbal <laughs> tea or coffee or whatever they like. You know, but it's it's a nice way to just make it simple. That and and it's only, it and and for people who haven't, if you don't have a lot of um, you know, you, you're not really willing to to sort of really read like a lot of psychology stuff. Like I mean, I did a bit of psychology from you know it's mm. training and all that and some of the reading texts on it you know you you really would want to swallow a dictionary yeah. or to you know really concentrate to read but actually this is a way of making it show her to be emotionally in tune you don't have you know there's a lot of people who are really emotionally in tune who would never necessarily read all of that stuff but using this method they get it Crack and you stuff. and you yeah, can yeah. really mm. see yeah, yeah. Mm. build confidence Makes in people sense. And, and carers are, it's amazing to watch families be better able to communicate what's going on to the child's social worker, mm. you know, and even for us to respond as professionals differently to social yeah. workers, try and manage meetings differently, you know, it, you know, but it's, it, it's kind of a whole organization approach, really. And yeah. we're trying now to bring it in, even at assessment, when we're introducing families to starting up to become a foster fam, you know, foster family that actually, even at that point, we're looking at how can we start this, mm. you know, so that, you know, be thinking about it. And, mm. you know, there's there's lots of good tools that you use, Absolutely. videos and, yeah. you know, so that's, I think it is good, you know. Um, and, and would you say that this is quite, I mean, I'm just thinking, because obviously thinking about, because I um, used to work for Adoption Plus in the UK and they were a really big kind of org, um, organisation that used to deliver DDP training to people who wanted to train DDP, so not the actual carers themselves. And I'm just thinking, you know, it's it's not a hugely widely known thing within parents, um, within fostering and adoption, let's say, in, in the UK. So is that quite is it quite a new approach for Ireland to be kind of taking on these different models, if you like, or 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 is it has it always been there? It's just never maybe had a name or, or how how does that look? Yeah. I, I think I think there's been pockets of it. Mm. I, th- I think there's pockets of people probably a little bit like ourselves that have been really kind of yeah. really trying to try something new and different. And and so, so DDP has been around, but I don't think it's ever really taken hold anywhere in particular. Yeah. Um, um, like I, I think some people have been trained in it, but in terms of an organizational kind of wide mm. piece that we're, we're really trying to kind of integrate into our own organization. Yeah. I haven't seen it in Ireland and then talking to, 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 to the guys in the UK, Kim, Kim Golding and, and, uh, Elaine McCullough, who's our, our consultant over there, she, they they don't know of any other organisation in Ireland that has done this type of work. Yeah. You know, um, I know Maria Lotti, who was working with Tusa, she's now in UCC. She had done a lot of work around kind of this kind of thing in terms of uh, trauma informed care uh, for foster carers, um, and that was with Tusa as well. But I don't, I don't, I, I think, I think there's a huge lack. Uh, I think, I think this is something that that this this kind of work and this kind of education and 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 learning about kind of how trauma really impacts kids the real nuts and bolts of like what happens to children when these things happen to them how does this impact them at at all the multiple levels and then with that understanding how do we best respond to them i think that there's a huge lack of that and i think it's so important and and uh yeah if we could get it into more of the systems in ireland i think it'd be so so worthwhile throughout all two star all the organizations there definitely is an increased Mm -hmm. appetite for you know like this and there's a lot of people maybe who will have done ddp level training Mm -hmm. or their staff will have yeah but i think in terms of us training trying to get all our carers on board we're probably yeah doing it a bit different and you know actually having occupational therapy and speech and language for cons- on a so our carers even you know they can have an access to that as a consultancy clinic mm-hmm. so you might not you know the our speech and language therapist we isn't going to be able to do speech therapy with like 185 kids all over the country no. but they can all but they can do some work with carers around supporting language development support and mm-hmm. communication um you know lots of things you know even like so, like in early infancy speech and language 
therapist would do a lot around feeding and around that sort of stuff as well. Which, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and similarly, the occupational therapist mm. would do stuff around sensory and motor um, and, and even we'll link in with schools if need be. So we do have, we also have an education coordinator who's really, really good at helping carers to get to get really connected with the schools because, you know, that is the role of the child and care social worker. But sometimes, mm. like, they're, they're, child and care social workers over here are absolutely mm. flat out Run on the ground. Feet, they yeah. really are. Yeah. I've no doubt similar in the UK. But actually, it's, it's you know, Paul that does that is, for us, has a really good understanding of the system and can really help with making sure that the right supports, that we apply for the right supports for the for the right kids, you know, and, and do things like that. So, mm-hmm. so you know, and it has meant that we've, you know, almost all of the young people in our care are in full time education and, you know, main, majority mainstream, you know, and some that need to be in, a, in special ed are, but, you know, it'd be much different. There wouldn't be as much of the sort of EBD schools yeah. over here. You know? um, mm, yeah, I, 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 I have to absolutely acknowledge that the education system over here is very different to the UK and as is the support systems and as you know I, I mean you would expect that we're a completely different country so you know it's, it's a, to be expected yeah. but I think um, it's it's very interesting the way the kind of approach works to here to you know special schools and things things that we've gotten rid of many months ago and the kind of yeah. terminology is still here um, in terms of how that works but I think that you know it's um it's just one of those things yeah. that will eventually evolve when I, in the same way yeah. you guys you know really promoting the DDP yeah. kind of mm-hmm. um, approach um, you know I've seen the bus model has been started to come to Ireland yes, as well exactly, yeah. um, you know we um, I. I, I use I use a bit of everything to be honest as a parent, <laughs> and I think the most yeah. parents are the same. Yeah. But I think if you if you find something that works for you and your family, then you go with it, don't you? I mean that, that that's yeah. the way yeah. you know exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I think I think it's really really great to hear just the kind of the whole kind of setup here is very similar, but there's tweaks. There's tweaks that have been made. I mm. I think we could yeah. say yeah definitely yeah. definitely yeah well. Sorry, are you no, I was just going to say, I'm else? sitting on loads of questions, but they're just not really for now. They're just more about me wanting to know things and being nosy, really. That's my <laughs> social work itch. You can ask, it's okay. Yeah, but is there anything like do you think our listeners might want oh, to hear? Oh, dear listener, dear heart. <laughs> um, yeah, you know the people who, you know, don't pay our well, bills and, I, you know, just criticise us on social well, media. I did wonder, you know. and this is maybe, well, yeah, I'll go for it. Um, so in the UK, obviously, the we have this sort of parallel fostering system in the sense we've got a local authority system, which is based in government and then we've got the independent foster care agencies which is a totally the two they run very similar but not um and you mentioned when you you applied for a job and actually you got got put in charge of this this new idea <laughs> um so is how is that perceived within sort of irish culture you know people doing it as a private agency because often in uk it's in england it's characterized as it's not characterized well. Business, business. money grabbing, yeah. profit, yeah, yeah. 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 making money. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I look. You know, like, I, like when we when I started, you know, because I came from community care. Yeah. what would have been children. You know, not the care social work, and and like when we started, you know, it was the first, and really it wasn't received that well. You know, and and for a long time we were the only agency, and then Foster First, another agency, came mm. along. Um, you know, and there's a few more now, but so it's, it is like, like Five Rivers is what's called a social enterprise. So there's, it's does generate a surplus, but a lot of that is reinvested, you know, I, you know, and, and I think an awful lot of the stuff we do, like, like, I mean, providing education to sort of supports and really investing in, in things like, like we don't have a massive marketing department. Maybe we'd have more carers if we did, yeah. because, you know, we're not flash. I'm not flashing it going around. But we, it's something we do need to do. So if if any of your listeners are out there and know someone in Ireland who wants to foster, absolutely, we're you know we we're ready, willing, and able <laughs> oh, to, to oh, take care. Is have to say yeah. that. Yeah, of course but you do. Definitely. Yeah, I'm just hoping that my husband doesn't listen because he's on the boat. I, I, I'm, well, the one, oh, and I'm just like, I... come on, stop. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think we're here? Yeah. <laughs> this is actually a home visit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. my granny was from Clare and everything. Oh wow, there you go. Yeah, there you it's, go. It's yeah. Actually, no. Labashita, not too oh, far. Oh, it's not, it's not far at all. Yeah, no, it's not. No, yeah, no. Yeah. But, uh, 
anyway, but but no, like you know, it's so I think like it's um you know it has grown. There are people who would certainly go oh money grabbing, but mm. you know our families are assessed the same way. Our staff like I'm not driving around in a in a Beamer or a Bentley or you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very old soccer mom car which is not that nice but anyway you know like we're we're you know i think it, it is an organization that and and in terms of inspection and like we're meeting the standards you know very very well we've um you know so look you know there are always going to be people who think you know that yeah it is what it is but like to be honest with you like i my First, you know, the really, really thing that the only thing that I want is to have a service whereby, you know, like you can do what you need to do for kids when you need it. And, you know, when I was working as a child and care social worker, this is a very long time ago. It's, you know, like I was working with the young person who was homeless, you know, was one of the young people I worked with. He was 15 or 16. I can't remember what age he was. Great, great young fellow. But, you know, over time and. In those days, you know, you got a clothing allowance every year is what child got. You know, I can't remember what it was, how much it was, but, you know, would kick you out. But, of course, this young fella lost his coat, you know, and to reapply. But he lost his coat because he was going through homeless services and, you know, whatever hostels. And, you know, I have two kids now and and they're, <laughs> and they're younger, but the coat could yeah. be left anywhere. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> realistic, anybody as a parent, you know, so actually, you know, the fact that he's lost his coat three times in two months going through homeless house, well, that's not that bad, you know. But I remember I talked, you know, to apply as a, you know, you'd have to fill out a form and send it up to get the coat. And the, But we, like most social workers, a lot of us at that stage, you know, you'd mm. buy the coat, you know, at the end yeah. of the day because you wouldn't. Whereas I suppose one of the good things for us is that, you know, there's not as many tears, you know, to go up to make a decision. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to be honest with you, if it is in the best interest of a child or a fam, you know, because foster families really do need to know that somebody's going to have their back because, mm. you know, it's 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 a risky. You're laying your whole family on the line. You're laying yourself on the line. And it's a huge advantage over five rivers, isn't it? That there is that access, more readily access to resources that are going to support the families in the yeah. UK. You know, we, we, because the public services, you know, is just so stretched every which way, and this waiting lists are huge. But 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 with the yeah. resources we have, we can actually yeah. Like, like if I already. could have done yeah. what I'm doing now yeah. within at the time, I would have stayed. Mm, yeah. To be honest with you, but yeah. and and like. Like, like, I we work very closely with with two. So I sit on two of their foster care mm-hmm. panels. So, you know, there's I have ultimate respect for, uh, you know, what social workers have to do there, mm-hmm. you know, and how the system works. Right. But for you know, I suppose the benefit of a smaller organization is there's not as many tears to yeah, go through. Course, you know, yeah. so we're able to, you know, if we decide we want to do bring in DDP, we were do, able to. Yeah work out how to do that yeah. and and people like you know we, we've been lucky enough that we've had just the, the the great team like getting dara on board was just great and now we have like so we've like about 180 kids in placement and as a team we have four psychologists who work with us which is just amazing now not all full of time but that's just an exceptionally yeah. massive resource to have, mm, you know. Yeah, it's huge. Um, now they work with other kids. They don't just work with our the kids in our families, but you know, and and the access to you know our carers can yeah, access yeah, yeah, a yeah. clinic every you know that every week we have a clinic open to to our staff to be able to just come in and uh, this is what I'm worried about. Let's unpick it a bit, you know, and to look at it through a different lens, and that's just. It's a it's it, it's a really good thing to be able to share that kind of mm. way and to try and think of things differently. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it you know it's it's probably similar. And some people will always think you know private agency or independent agencies are you know um you know kind of money grabbing. But you know we all have to pay a budget. And and the one thing in in Five Rivers is that the budget is only the income that comes from the placement. So you have to spend the money well. To, to do what you want to do, you know, mm. and, and for us, the, where we spend it best is on bringing in services for families, yeah. you know, and do, do so. Well, it sounds to me like you do a lot more than just support families. You, you know, you, you, you're doing a lot more than that. And I think that, you know, my experience of a few years back when we moved back to the UK to 
um, look into fostering actually because we looked yeah. at it in Ireland it was a completely different system like you said you know it's a health board system um, yeah. there was no such thing as two slide there was no such thing as independent fostering and stuff so I'm I'm, ple- I'm personally pleased to see it has progressed and it has developed and I think that you know hats off to you for doing that um, and um, you know there's 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 lots more that we can talk about but obviously um, yeah. yeah we're uh, <laughs> coming up to an hour <laughs> yeah we, we can i could talk for we, well i don't know i could talk forever I talk a lot no no it's not you it's look at Al's little face there bless him he's obviously had an early morning did you have an early morning no, he's real yeah, he yeah. Must yeah. Have see i lie in bed till yon time because i have a yes. brain injury so i don't well, look when, when 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 we've got you back up and running and fostering you'll be able to get up, <laughs> up, 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 up. <laughs> i can be a character reference friend. oh my god five, can i yeah. can i just say that i go through facebook and i'm literally that is all that i get in ads is fostering ads for fostering agencies in Ireland so um, I don't know if it's trying to tell me something or if we talk about it too much or what and they are with us Scott so Uh, yeah exactly yeah 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 well (laughs) listen Deirdre and Dara thank Thank you so much for coming on it's been a real eye-opener and we really appreciate your time especially because we know we had to change the day at the time because um I'll double booked for something else that's okay. So, um, That's okay. Thank you for t- making. <laughs> thank you. I'm only ribbing them, really, but you know, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, and you, and you do have our contact. Yes, if but you, we I all. You know, yeah, we will put all the details of Five Rivers yeah. in the show notes, so people can click on the link. Yeah. Um, and if they're in Ireland and they're interested in finding out more about fostering, then we will we will direct yeah, them to you. Fantastic. No problem. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Great stuff. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.